Today's card is this cute Be More Unicorn, and I've made an interesting background using the cloud template, which I showed how to make simply from some die cut or circle cuts and a piece of white card. I've made the interesting background and I've made a little hill, and then I've stamped the image from this set, which is called Unicorn Power. It's by a company called Viva Decor. <clears throat> I've coloured it using my Pro Markers. <clears throat> I've used Distress Inks in Dusky Con Dusty Concord and Kitsch Flamingo, and just generally created a cute card. There's a Wink of Stella on the main as well for a little bit of glitter and 3D effect, but you can see it's quite a cute card. You wanna know how I did it? Stay watching. So we're going to start with our piece of card. I've got here a simple six by six inch piece of card. This is a 250 or 300 GSM standard white card, useful for stamping, etc. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to use the cloud template that I showed you how to make in my previous video. This is simply die cut circles mounted on a white piece of card. And then I've used a simple brush technique to create a cloud effect using the edges. So I demoed that in my last video. And now I'm going to use that same technique on this card to start creating our background. So I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper, just find a piece, put that under my card, which I know is going to make it a little bit more difficult to see, but hey. And then I'm just going to take my ink, stamp it off so that it's a little bit fainter, and then start rubbing around the template that I created just to create a slightly cloudy background. So I'm using really light pressure. I'm also following the lines of the circles, but I don't want to get any really hard edges here. So I'm keeping things very light with not much pressure. So you see, we're talking really silhouetted edges. So very, very pale. So I'm going to do a few layers in the pink and then I'm going to fill in between them with purple and with blue. So again, obviously if you don't take the, per the pink off, you will get a slightly harder edge, but that's not bad. We want that in some places, a bit of variety. And then I always usually pull away at the end just to make sure the piece closest to the stencil has the most ink so you can actually see an edge. There we go. So I think two layers is probably enough in the pink. Put that away. This is a pink distress ink from Tim Holtz in Kitsch Flamingo. Put that one away. I've now got Dusty Concord again distress ink and I've got my purple dome brush this time. Purple being a darker colour, definitely take a bit more of that off before you start. So go back over and I'm going to actually flip this around this time so that I've got different clouds and I'm going to look for a space where my clouds aren't and then I'm just going to do the same thing. Starting with this one obviously very 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 lightly. I don't want any really hard edges especially with a darker colour like purple. So I'm just going to pull that across, following the lines of the circles and just in a really gentle circular motion. You cannot be too gentle when you're doing this. Working with distress inks, be gentle. You can always add more, you can't take it off. So once you get the sort of level of colour that you think you need, then just go around the edges Got a piece of loose sellotape there which is coming off but just go around those edges just to get a nice purple color maybe a slightly darker towards the edges as it goes off the card there we go that's starting to look quite nice with the different layers again let's go down the bottom here and just we're implying clouds but without making proper clouds I was going to do pink, purple and blue, but actually just looking at the space I've got, I think pink and purple is enough. I don't want to confuse it too much because what I also want to do is add a hill at the bottom. There we go. 
Now, the unicorn stamp that I'm using is from this set, which is by Viva Decor. Um, it's actually called uh, Unicorn Power, and there are several really nice stamps in here, but I'm gonna today use this one, which is the basic unicorn horse and shape. Now, what I wanna do is just check really where that's gonna fit on my card. So I think it's gonna be somewhere here, in which case I've probably got another layer I can do there. So I'm gonna go back to the purple, gonna find an interesting piece, and then just give it one more layer. I'm working my way. Again, pulling off the stencil so I get as much ink as I can onto those edges, but without hard lines. And see, I'm noticing a gap there, so I'm actually gonna just fill a little bit of that cloud in with purple. There we go. So we've now got a nice, easy cloud background in literally five minutes. So, put my ink away. So I'm actually only gonna do pink and purple. I had got my Distress Ink out in Speckled Egg, but I don't think I'm gonna use that today. I don't wanna confuse it too much. But what I wanna do now is I wanna create a focal point to put my unicorn on. So I'm gonna create a hill. And basically, I'm just gonna do it with any old piece of scrap paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip a piece of paper off, I'm gonna fold it in half, and then I'm literally gonna cut myself a hill. So, I want a quite a nice dome, so I'm starting like that. So I'm ending up with a curve, and when I open it out, it's gonna be like that. Basically, I'm gonna ink this way. I've got, obviously, the hill, which is here, but I don't wanna ink that way because I want my hill to recede in a green. So I'll pop that down on my project. You just choose a green ink. I think we'll go with, uh, again, a Distress Ink in shabby shutter shutters. So <clears throat> let's take that off. I think this is a relatively pale color, actually. So I'm gonna turn that round because it's always easier to work away from you. Think about where you want the hill to end. It's gonna be dominant in the middle. Now, because this is only a flimsy piece of paper, I'm actually just gonna be really careful and pull the ink away from me. So I want this to sort of fade as it goes down the paper, obviously stronger at the edge. But if I try to do a circular motion on this, it's gonna crumple the paper. So I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna be exactly like that. I think I might've got away with that. Um, but yeah, that's why in this scenario, I would pull it away from you. You always have to think about inks and the way that they're moving and interacting with what you're using as a template or a mask. I want to get some strong colour on the edge. But I'm not too bothered about it going all the way down to the bottom. There we go. And there's our hill, instant hill. Just wipe that off. That looks fine to me. There we go. We've got a hill and we've got some clouds. Boom. Okay, let me just clean my inks away. Right, now let's take our unicorn. I'm gonna use my stamping platform. I wanna make sure that I get a really good impression. So the best way to do that is to use a stamping platform where you get the chance to go over it a few times. Just gonna hold that in place. And I'm gonna use, as usual, my anti-static pad, which I keep in this little tub, just to give that a wipe, just to make sure that that's dry because I've only just inked it. In fact, I'm doing this wrong. I'm not gonna stamp it on here. I'm gonna do it on a separate piece of card. Of course, I'm gonna cut it out, which I'd completely forgotten. So, let me grab a piece of scratch card. I'm literally just gonna rip that. But I'm gonna stamp this in my platform. So, take your unicorn, which is here, and I'm gonna just stamp that quite low down. And then I'm gonna also stamp a sentiment here, which I'm gonna fit on the frame. And I think the one I'm gonna use is Be More Unicorn because it's cute. So as I'm gonna cut this out, rather than waste any paper, I'm just gonna stamp the two like that. So this is a clean piece of paper. I don't need to 
use my handy static pad. This should stamp beautifully. I'm going to heat emboss this as usual because I'm going to colour it with some Pro markers. So I need to make sure that I set a, a decent and solid edge. If I heat emboss it, it also gives me an edge to colour up to. So I've just inked that in my VersaFine Onyx Black. Just pushing down on that and just giving it a good impression. Grabbing my tub of lovely, super fine clear embossing powder from WOW. Take that off and look, we've got ourselves a lovely thick image. Right, <clears throat> take that out, dip that into my emboss powder, tap that off. That is actually all the stuff being done. Right, I'm gonna heat up my embossing gun, embossing heat tool to its hottest setting, always pre-warm. And apologies for the noise. I'm just gonna heat that, lifting it up slightly to let the heat go through the paper, which makes it work better. This is a lovely image. It's got really lovely thick borders and it's super quick and easy to color as well. Just working my way around that. And then once that's all done on that side, I will also flip it over and just do the back very, very gently. Okay, there's our stamping done. I'm going to get my cloth out and I'm just going to clean my stamps up. Clean as you go, I say. Just give that a wipe. If you've not seen my videos before, I do keep my cleaning cloth in a little tub to keep it damp. And give it a rinse out in the sink every now and then. Um, but also I clean up as I go and several people have commented and said it's so nice to see somebody that actually does that in the videos. So I'm going to put my stamps back on their stamp set and put that away. Keep stuff tidy as you go, I say. Having said that, if you could see the side of my desk, it's not so clean, but hey. Okay, and that is a cute stamp set. Okay. <clears throat> so we've now done all the stamping that we need to for this project. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this out. First of all, I'm just going to cut the sentiment away and then I'm just going to cut the image away. Gives me a nice piece of scrap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour match the pinks and purples. I've got here a selection of Pro Markers, which are the Windsor & Newton pens. Um, I really like these alcohol markers. Um, they're really good. I find the blending really good. Um, and I use these all the time, so I've got quite a good selection. Obviously, they dry up over time, but they keep pretty well, to be honest. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give the body of my unicorn, first of all, a little bit of colour. Just making sure that you can see that. So I'm going to go around the edge with Cool Grey 1, just to give it a little bit of 3D. And then I'm going to blend that out with the blender. I don't want loads, just a little bit. And I'm taking my blender, which is obviously the neutral colour. And I'm just going to go over that. Just to dull down that hard edge. But it does give the stamped image just a little bit of body rather than looking like something stamped on a page. Actually going to use the square edge, I think. There we go, the speed. once I've done this is I will go back in on those back legs and just give them a little bit more colour. I 
It's actually not blending that well. I think I might actually go back over that. Actually colour in, give it an actual grey. This is a very light grey. But I think this blender is a bit dry, to be honest. And then just go over that again, just to smooth that out. Once it's dry, it should be fine. It's a cute stamp, this is. I've used this on quite a lot of children's cards. And what I'll do is I'll go back in with the grey. Just to highlight those bits, I really want a little bit of darkness around the edges of the face, under the mane, under the chin and then those back legs. Just to give it a little bit of 3D. There we go. So we've got our horse, he's got a little bit of texture on him now. So I shall then color the other elements. Now the tail and the horn, I will do in matching colors to my card base. So I'm gonna use a purple, I'm not going to do loads of fancy blending on this. I'm going to do a pink. I think that one's a bit shocking. I think this is probably a better colour. I've got a different purple, which I will use on the horn, which is more of a mauve colour. And I've got a, another pink. I think I'll go for the brighter one of the two. This is the Cerise. So we've got some lovely pinks and purples. There we go. And then I'll colour the last one in on the horn. <clears throat> when I colour this guy in, I always do a really bright yellow on the mane. Oh, that, you can see the state of that. That does not look good. I can do it with the other end though. This is a tulip yellow, which I definitely need to replace. And this is the only place I would actually do any real blending. I'm just laying down a layer of colour with the tulip yellow, taking that up into the main at the top. And then what I will do is I will go over that with the sunflower just to get a little bit more colour into some of those elements. So I'm using a bit of sunflower in some places and then I'll go back in with the tulip yellow and just blend that together a little bit. Just to get a bit of texture. We don't want completely flat colour. I know that's sort of the point of alcohol pens, but you just want a bit of texture so you can see some texture within. I'm going to go back in with the cool grey and just give his ears a bit of colour. Okay. <laughs> and also the hooves. So I think the hooves we shall do in maybe, <coughs> excuse me, a slightly darker grey. So I'm just going to grab, this is called grey three out of my box. There we go. That's a slightly darker grey. And our unicorn is coloured. So he looks quite cute. Okay. What I'm also going to do whilst I've got my unicorn is cut him. So I need to cut him out. So I'm going to use these tiny little scissors and I'm actually just going to fussy cut him. Now, those of you that know me will know how much I despise fussy cutting. I'm not going to try and lecture anybody on how to do this at all because I am hopeless at it. But you find a way to make it work and you do it. So I'm cutting him out because I want him to be 3D on the card so I'm probably going to lift him up from the card base on pads in which case I need to cut him out so my process and I'm not saying this is the best by any means is go around and get fairly near your image so I'm cutting away all the excess which would be hard to work with and then I'm just going to go around and actually cut into the detail I hate this I hate fussy cutting I'm absolutely rubbish at it I sort of do as best I can, but I really don't profess to be any good at it. I find it quite difficult. Um, these scissors have got a sort of teethy edge, and I'm actually not even sure they're the right scissors, to be honest, but I sort of somehow manage, so 
Right, I'm turning my project, which I believe is how you should do it, as I cut rather than trying to turn my scissors. So I am cutting all the white away. Feel free to speed this piece up. I don't tend to fast forward through my videos. I'll let you decide whether you want to do that. And uh, keep rabbiting away while I'm talking and, and doing it. So you can happily listen to me rabbit on or not, as the case may be. If you want to fast forward through this piece, please feel free. Turning the project all the time. And what I will do before I use this is I will go around the edges on the reverse with a black marker just to cut off any white edges because we don't want to see white edges where it's clearly stamped in black. I know a lot of girls who are very, very good at fussy cutting um, in one of the card groups that I belong to, probably throwing their uh, phones out of the window as I'm doing this, watching me do it, thinking what a pig's ear you're making of it, John. But hey, it's the way I do it. So I'm cutting my way through. This has got, as you can see, it's got a lovely big thick black line. So there's absolutely no excuse to have any confusion around what to cut to on this. There we go, I'm just joining those cuts up and pulling the little pieces out. Um, be careful as you do that because you don't want to create a torn piece because then that's sometimes hard to sort of fix. But this is the way I do it. And you can see I've done pretty much half of him already. It didn't take that long. The tail is cute. And what I should do also is I should use a Wink of Stella to get some glittery effect on the main, I typically do. But I won't do that until right at the end because that takes a while to dry. Um, I've got a little bit I need to go back on there and correct in the tail, but I will do that at the end. No, this gets quite thin here, so you have to be a little bit careful. Okay, let's go back up here. And then try and turn that round and join up my cuts. There we go. That's worked out okay. Cut across these two and then cut up. I always find if you're pulling stuff away, pull it from the back, and that way you hopefully prevent any kind of rip from the front. All right, we've got quite a fat little unicorn here. He's got a decent belly on him, or her. You see, I just pulled that from the front and look, I've now got that little bit left, which is exactly what I just told you not to do. And I've just gone and done it myself. How stupid am I? But we can correct that. If you can cut in a triangle, that's always good advice. Um, find a way to do two single straight line cuts and join them up. There we go, he's pretty much cut now. I just need to tidy that bit up and I need to try and tidy that up as well. There we go, that's got that. And then I need to just tidy that. And also there. And then just this little bit here on the tail. Right, there we go. Clear away all your offcuts. 
and we now have a little unicorn. It looks quite good. I need to just tidy up this bit on the main. There we go. Right, so he looks quite good. I'm going to take a black Sharpie, a piece of scrap paper, turn him over and just go along the edges from the back and that will hopefully colour up any white edges from the paper. Try to hold it down as you do this because you don't want too much ink to link, leak onto the front. But as I said, this unicorn does have a rather nice thick black line outline so that shouldn't actually be a problem. Some people do this I know on the side of the car but if you do that you risk accidentally going over the card edge and if you do that you can seriously ruin what you've been doing. So let's have a look at what he looks like now. So I can still see a few bits of white there so I'm actually going to do that but what you can do if you hold your pen that way it should stop you going over the front. I think the rest of him looks okay. Pay particular attention to any of those bits you had to pull off because that's where you will typically get a white edge. You go like in there, I can see a little bit of white there, but I'm actually going to colour that on the front. And then similarly there and there. Just in there. The fact he has this lovely thick border does make me very happy. Okay, there's our unicorn. He's going to sit on the hill here. And then what I've got is a die cut. I've used this frame die that I've got that was part of another set. And I'm actually gonna place my unicorn in the little frame. And I've got the Be More Unicorn uh, sentiment which I will probably put up the top there. Okay so I think the time has come to stick our frame down. I'm not going to raise this, I'm going to raise the unicorn but I'm not going to raise the frame and I'm just going to use glue to stick this down. Um, I'm just deciding whether I'm going to do anything around the edge of the car but I think actually I might like it just plain white. Yes I think so. Okay so doing this with glue is definitely the easiest way to do it. Um, I'm just applying glue using my little bottle with a very fine end point. I'm trying not to get too much glue on because I don't want anything seeping out from underneath, even though it is a clear glue. Um, just using it quite sparingly. You don't need that many anchor points, so you don't need to cover the whole thing in glue. Um, and what I would do probably as well is I will just probably touch this down on a piece of paper before I stick it just to take the excess off. So I'm just gonna touch that down like that. That's taken a whole load off, but obviously there's still a whole load left. There's no upside down or right way around for this. So I'm just gonna go for it, just eyeballing it. Okay, I think that is pretty straight. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think so. Just gives me a little bit of wiggle room, which is good. But I think that looks pretty good. And this is a sort of a kind of holographic paper that I bought at a craft fair. We can get in most places. There you go. That's quite cute. I think. We're pretty good. Just gonna push that up just a tiny little bit on that side. There we go. Okay. And our unicorn is gonna sit quite cutely on the hill. And I think the Be More unicorn is gonna go there. Exactly. Could go here, could mount it on the actual frame, put the unicorn up a bit higher. I think actually that might be a better option. Okay, before we decide on that, let's let that glue stick a bit. Let's cut our sentiment down. So I'm just going to completely eyeball this. I don't want loads of space around it. It's rather a strange shape and I'm hoping it'll cut all right. So I'm doing one cut lightly, then a second cut quite deeply, third cut deeply. That's my 
little way of doing this. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to put it on a line on my cutting mat so that I know what I'm cutting now is roughly square. If I line up here, I can look at the line the other side just to get that even, leaving a little bit more gap at the top than the bottom. There we go. And then I'm probably just going to use my scissors. to cut the ends, which I can just do by eye. These are really good. These are the Tonic Jim, uh, Tim Holtz, uh, I can't remember what they're called actually, long scissors, but they're just really long and straight and they are great. I love them. So as I cut that, I'm gonna use my bone folder to just flatten down the edges. One thing I hate is when people don't do that, and you can see cut edges. Just go over them with the bone folder. It tidies all that stuff up. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color this as well. And <clears throat> I think I'm gonna use the, the same two colors again. So I'm just gonna use the residual ink that's on my brushes. So I would do a fade, I think, one end pink, one end purple. So I'm just gonna go really lightly. Grab a piece of scrap card. Uh, that's what you don't want to happen. That's okay, I think I'd get away with that. And then I'm just gonna put some purple around the edges. This is quite subtle, intentionally. I don't want it too dark. And then similarly with the pink at the other end. Again, just go around the edges, darken those edges. That will then bring the colour your, to your attention. There we go. I'm not loving the fact that I've creased that, but I think it's probably okay. No, I don't like it. I'm going to have to do it again. I'm sorry, but I am a bit of a perfectionist and that does not meet my quality standard. So let's just quickly stamp another one. So, grab my sentiment. I'm just gonna do it on a block this time. Other people might let that go, but I'm afraid I'm a bit, I like it right. Be more unicorn. There we go. Although, I'm now seeing a line on the end there as well. I think I've got like a loose hair or something. Let's try that again. What I'm doing is I'm stamping the ink on there and then I'm rubbing it off. I think that must have been a loose hair or something. So I'm just gonna actually look at that with my tweezers. I think there is a, a hair on my stamp. I think I've got it. Let's try that again now. That's better. Okay, let's again. Dump that in my emboss powder. And I'm just gonna heat that quickly. that but I wouldn't be happy with it and I sell my cards on Etsy so if you bought that and received it and it wasn't perfect you might be disappointed and I would never want that to happen so I'm afraid no I quickly do it again 
Okay, put my stamps away, clean. Okay, so that should be dry by now. So again, let's just give that a cut. Just by eye. cutting mat and then put it where I think it should go but then obviously check it against the grid on the cutting mat. I think that's about right. Okay, need to cut those ends down as well which I will do just with my scissors some black on there but that doesn't matter that's not going to be on the bit that I'm doing I'm actually now checking myself I might actually put that with a ruler just to make sure there we go off cuts out of the way and we've now got a new sentiment to play with so again let's just flatten the edges And I think I might just need to re-ink stamp that off. I don't want to make the same mistake again. Oh, could you believe it? I've done the same thing again, honestly. No, <laughs> I hate to say it. I'm going to have to do it again. Oh my lord, I'm not having a good day today. Okay, let's go for it again. I'll tell you what I'm going to do this time though. I'm going to colour the paper before I stamp it and that way we'll make sure we do it right. So, I'm just going to go in with my ink. So, purple. At one end. I want it darker as I get towards the end. This stuff happens, unfortunately, and we just have to work around it. That's the purple. I'm going to do the same with the pink. I'm going to turn my paper around. This is a nice pink. It's a flamingo pink. It's quite a bright, cute pink. There we go. But we want quite a subtle blend. Okay, I'm just going with the purple again. There we go. Okay, stamping block, stamp. you believe it honestly I'm not doing well today go down underneath and make sure we actually put it down squarely this time give that a second just absorb there we go That's certainly better okay in my clear embossing powder shake that off and then I will just quickly heat emboss that. Apologies that took a couple of goes. It will all be worth it in the end. Now because I've put that emboss powder over that and it's just been inked it's actually going to make the whole thing shiny but that's fine because that kind of ties in with the whole card.
and we're going to have a bit of sparkle. this off quickly. I didn't imagine I was going to have to do that three times, but hey, let's get that back in its set. There we go. And we are good. Now, let's not screw up the cutting of this this time. So, there's a couple of little black bits there which are annoying, but I think I'm going to have to live with them. Okay, so... What I'm going to do actually is cut the ends down before I cut the line. need to trim okay just line that up roughly check that on my mat Hooray, I think we have a decent sentiment. It took some getting to, but we're there with a little quite subtle colour. You can just see it's purple at one end and just see it's pink at the other. So that should hopefully work okay. Right, let's take our card back. The first thing I'm going to do is mount my unicorn on the top. So I'm going to take some standard card pads and my tweezers which are here and i'm gonna lift him up i'm applying these pads just at strategic points and then i'll actually cut some down as well for some of the smaller pieces so just getting fairly decent general coverage you could do this with a glue like pin flare or something and then what I'm going to do is just simply cut one of these into a few smaller pieces so that I can use them on some of the extremities. So like the tail, uh, here, and then I'm going to do the legs. Good do, I suppose. Yep. It's good to stick these down because in the opening of the card, you may well rip if uh, if it's a loose edge that's not stuck down. You've got to think about the practicalities of taking it out the, in and out of the envelope. Okay, I'm now peeling all these off. Myself, which is not great. There we go. Get rid of the loose and let's tidy up my tweezers, which have got a bit sticky on them. Okay, and let's decide where we're going to put him. So, if we're going to put the sentiment at the bottom, I think he needs to go quite near the top. So, I think. That's where he's going to rest. There we go. There's our unicorn on the car. You can see because I've mounted it, you've got a nice sort of 3D effect. 
cool. And then I'm going to take my sentiment. I think I'm going to put it down here. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it on black because I want to back the card with black and that will tie the whole thing together. So I'm reaching into my stash of cuts that are next to me. I'm going to find a straight edge, which is that corner. And then I'm just going to mount that on there. I'm going to use glue. It's quite thick card so that'll be okay there we go a little bit of glue and I'm just going to put that in the corner so that I've already got two edges that are cut and square there we go press that down turn it over give it a good press just to let the glue bond Have I got a piece of kitchen roll nearby? Yes, because I can see there's a little squidge of glue that's come out from under there, but it's clear, so it'll dry fine. And then I'm just gonna cut that down to try and match that top border. There's a lot of eyeballing goes on in card making, which is where you just guess. There we go. going to sit there which is quite nice just stick that down with glue again try and get that pretty roughly in the middle and level down a little bit and there we go and up a little bit and that's the good thing about doing it with glue you get a little bit of wiggle room which is always useful I'm just going to turn that over and give that a good press from behind okay let's now back our card with some black paper so I'm actually going to use tape because there's quite a lot of this so as usual do my little bunny ears trick Although actually now I don't need to bother on this layer, I'll do it on the next layer. So I'm just going to actually stick tape on the edges. And across the middle. Which I can immediately peel off because... I'm just putting it down on the edge. I'm, I, I could do the bunny ears trick on this to line it up, but it's fairly safe that I would manage to line it up correctly. If you want to do bunny ears so that you can wiggle it, feel free, or you could stick this layer down with glue, obviously. So, line one side up. And then hopefully the other should be in the right place. There we go. And then just cut. Totally by eye. But hopefully fine. There we go. Of black back in my pile of scrap and then now another layer of tape do get through quite a lot of tape when you're card making obviously the front of your project is now on your cutting mat so do make sure that you clean your cutting mat regularly and don't also forget put it with some fairy liquid to soak in the bath because that will encourage it to heal itself because they are supposed to be self-healing mine has got quite a lot of cuts in it but it's in not bad condition. Okay, now I'm going to put this onto a standard white card blank. So I'm just reaching here for a six by six card blank. I'm just going to line that up and then use my bone folder. Just give it a good solid fold. Check it the other side and do it again. And that's going to go on there like that. Cool. Bunny ears. I 
Out from the middle. And then let's look, put that out there. Always check you're the right way up. And then let's line that up. I'm just standing up to do this so I can actually see what I'm working on. Okay. Just hold that loosely and then peel off the tapes. Use your bone folder and just run over everything to make sure they're all down and tidy. Just give that a little blow. What I am noticing here is I've got a slightly jagged edge, so I'm actually just going to run along that with my scalpel this is a little trick it sort of pushes the bony the sort of slightly jagged stuff underneath and it straightens up a line there we go that looks quite nice i could add more gems i could add some pink and purple little jewels if i wanted to but i think it actually looks quite nice as it is what i'm going to do though is take my nuvo wink of stella this one's called aqua shimmer give that a shake it's got glitter in it and I'm going to then just colour over the mane. And you can see, hopefully, as I put that on, it creates a shimmery effect, which is clear but adds a layer of glitter, which any young girl who receives this card will like. Hopefully you can see that. And there we go. So that's today's project. We've got our unicorn from this stamp set, which is Viva Decor. We've created our own cloud background using the template that I made in my previous video, which I will link. We've stamped the, the unicorn, we've mounted it up on pads against the background of clouds and a little hill with our sentiment that says be more unicorn and that holographic frame which just gives it a nice shiny effect to match the the main okay hope you enjoyed that um i'm actually going to tidy this up a little bit because i can see there is some black no some white sorry there which is always risky when you get to this last stage but stuff like that you can just do as a final touch to your project the fact that my unicorn is sitting above the base means I can do that stuff and not worry too much about screwing it up. Okay, there you go. There's today's project. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you like my cards, uh, please like and subscribe and watch my channel for other videos. Thank you very much and I'll catch you again soon.